Norwich was a 14th century mystic who was sometimes called Juliana. She was born in 1342, but there is no clear record of her death, which scholars place at about 1416. In fact, we're not really sure that her name was Julian, or if she was called this simply because of her association with St. Julian Church in Norwich, England. She may have been a Benedictine nun at the Abbey in Cara, which is located near Norwich. In the latter part of her life, she lived as an anchoress in the Church of St. Julian. This was a practice among people at the time who were deeply religious and wanted a more contemplative form of life. The person would be enclosed in a small structure, such as this, attached to the outside of the church. There was an elaborate ceremony during which the door was walled up or bricked in permanently. The only outside access the person had was through a slit-like window that looked into the church so that he or she could observe mass, and there were usually one or two windows facing the outside so that the person could receive visitors who would come to ask for prayers or counsel. The only living thing the person was allowed to have inside the anchorage was a cat, and this was because of a problem with rats inside anchorages. Julian was very fond of her cat, and so she is sometimes pictured with that animal. Julian wanted to renew her spiritual life, and in particular, she wanted to know more about Jesus' suffering during his passion. So, she prayed for a sickness that would help her to understand. God answered her request in a most extraordinary way. When she was thirty and a half, she fell seriously ill to the point where she lost consciousness. After seven days, she appeared to be in a coma, but she had a series of sixteen visions which she called revelations of divine love. The visions were mainly about Christ's passion and the role that his blessed mother played in the history of salvation. They raised complicated issues such as predestination, foreknowledge of God, and the existence of evil. Her most famous vision is informally called the hazelnut vision. In this vision, God placed in her hand a small spherical object, which she described as about the size of a hazelnut. God said that this object represented all that is. She marveled that it didn't disappear because it seemed so tiny and fragile. She learned that it, representing all of creation, exists and always will exist because God loves it. And all things are created through God's love. She came to understand that God created it, that God loves it, and that God keeps it. She thus came to understand God as creator, keeper, and lover. For the next 20 years after her visions, she continued to have what she called inward teaching as she reviewed the visions in her mind and prayed about their meaning. She didn't actually write down the visions immediately and only did so in about 1393 after having contemplated, studied, and prayed about them. Her manuscript refers to what she saw, but it also says things like, I was given to understand that, which could refer to these inward revelations. There are also different versions of her manuscript, and it is unclear if these differences have to do with the changes that she made over time as her understanding evolved, or whether the changes were made by the copyists. Some scholars believe that there were two main manuscripts, one written early on and the other written later after the inward revelations. Julian described herself as a simple creature, unlettered at the time of the visions, but in fact her written account of them shows that she did receive some kind of instruction in theology, likely in that intervening twenty years. She also said that she would have forgotten the details of the visions, but that the Holy Spirit kept them fresh in her mind as she continued to pray for understanding of their meaning. She said that more than 15 years after the visions, she prayed and asked God again and again for understanding the meaning of it all. And God said this, Would you know your Lord's meaning in this thing? Know it well. 
Love was his meaning. Who showed it to you? Love. What did he show you? Love. Why did he show it? For love. Keep yourself therein, and you shall know and understand more in the same. But you shall never know or understand any other thing forever. Thus, Julian took up the habit of calling God by the name Love. She also said that after this revelation, the purpose of all human life became clear to her, and suddenly, the possibility of sin and the existence of evil no longer troubled her. She said it was made bliss by love, and she said that there was a great deed above our ability to reason that the Blessed Trinity would do on the last day, and she said, all shall be well, all shall be well, and all manner of things shall be well. Interestingly, she was never beatified, and thus she is not a canonized saint.